What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. So it's November now. We're getting into fall and winter, so... Let's review Midsummer. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. We were waiting for it to come out on. I was going to say, no, DVD is not the right thing to. No, but that's just what home I own. Video. Home, but even that sounds. I just feel like that's what you hear on your old Disney VHS. Coming tapes. to. It's coming soon to, to Disney home DVD and video. home video. Yeah. Yeah. Home release, I guess. Sure. Because I want to be able to have clips and stuff. And mm-hmm. I, wanted, I wanted to rewatch this one because when we went to see it, it was one where I didn't want to take notes during it. I wanted to just go and see a movie and enjoy myself. Yeah. That's how I feel about The Lighthouse too, which we have not yet seen. Nope. But I want to just go and see that and enjoy it. And if we review it, it'll be sometime later when we can rewatch it. So Yeah. When we saw Midsummer in theaters, we left and had disagreements about it. Oh, yeah. And I'm curious to see how we feel about it now after rewatching it. Yeah. I This movie, I think, was very polarizing for people. Not even in terms of whether or not it's good, just in terms of, like, what are people getting out of it? Mm-hmm. How do you feel after it? Mm-hmm. It's definitely, uh, it's fraught. There's a lot going on here. But to, I don't know. To me, that's the sign of a you know, a worthwhile movie is if you can have that kind of discussion after if there's stuff to read into, if, you know, you're dealing with something that's not so surface level, although that can be fun too, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I think, and, you know, I guess I should just say right up front, I I love this movie. Yeah, I really like Um, it. So that's going to be my review of it. I really enjoy this movie. I think it's incredible. Um, oh, Lucy wants to play with the flower crown that I have on. Well, yeah, because one of them is opening and closing. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little cat toy. Yeah, geez. Oh, boy. This That's isn't even fun. ours. This is our assistant's. <laughs> Thanks, Lucy. Alex. This is Alex's. You can't eat this. <laughs> um, that, oh, there yeah. She goes. See, there she no, goes. you don't eat this. <laughs> Midsummer is the second film by Ari Aster, who made Hereditary. Yes. Or a second feature-length film. He's made a bunch of shorts. Yes, that's like where he really got his start is yeah, making a bunch, bunch of, of shorts. creepy shorts, right? Mm. Yeah, Ari Aster working some stuff out in film, which I <sighs> you love to see it, honestly. Did he experience a personal loss uh, while making Hereditary? or? I don't know for sure, but I do know that Midsummer was written when he was going through a breakup, and yeah. you can tell. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. This is a breakup movie, mm-hmm. and it is painful to watch if you've ever been in a relationship that uh, is just dying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It's it's so accurate in it its really portrayal of that. Is like the idea of being just yeah trapped in something that you know isn't going anywhere mm-hmm. you know i think it's not and we're going to be all over the place i think cuz i this i want to have just more of a general discussion instead of just a beat by beat recap mm-hmm. um, although i think with this one you know it's not like a movie that everyone's seen so we will also have to do some recap that's true okay i'll save some of my thoughts i was going to oh because they're very uh spoilery okay for the end if we want to you know get there eventually yeah i don't know i don't think you have to save I, I i think we should just you know mention the plot points but we can be all it's gonna be spoilery yeah. all right go watch it if you want to it's two and a half hours it's a beast well, it's a I, long one. I mean, I was going to say it's not a coincidence. I don't think that we have a character at the end who is sewn up inside of a dead animal and is trapped inside of a dead animal. The idea of being trapped in a dead oh. relationship or a dead, you know. Sure, there you go. Yeah, a lot going on here. Yeah. So, yeah, nice folk horror, too. I guess mm-hmm. I'll, I might talk a little bit about Wicker Man. I don't, I don't think this is, um, I think besides the visual similarities, this is not super similar to Wicker Man, I don't think. Doesn't that have a cult too? It does. It's it's the same, you know, it's it's a 
folk horror. It's a weird pagan cult, but the stuff that it's saying, like the meat of it, is a different okay thing. Yeah. I don't know. I guess we can set a, set it up with just the general plot. You got Florence Pugh, Pugh, Pugh the GH is silent, uh, who we know from Fighting with My Family. That's right. She played yeah. Paige. Uh huh. Hell yeah. She's great. I mean, she's in other stuff too. But I was, I couldn't believe. Like, like we had just seen Fighting with My Family, and then we went to go see Midsummer, and that was crazy. Yeah, entirely different roles and characters. I love. Her voice, I know that she's doing an American accent in Midsummer, but mm-hmm. just her voice, especially in that scene early on when her and Christian, her boyfriend, are having a dispute about uh, how he didn't tell her about the trip. And she's like, no, like, we can just talk about just like there's something about her voice there. She does have a nice voice. It's like a nice, deeper voice. Yeah. Which I always then appreciate. When she's mimicking the song later yeah, on, it's... the woman singing is really high pitched. Mm-hmm. And uh, Florence repeats what she's saying in a much lower register but it's it's so beautiful yeah i, I like love it, a lot. it sad half day sad half day good are true good are true sad half day good are true this movie's interesting and I'm looking kind of at the beginning of my notes and we were just like talking about spoilers and the idea of oh should we not reveal some stuff right but the beginning of this movie there is a an opening scrim and it literally is everything you're gonna see which when you see this movie the first time even if you're studying it it doesn't really register because it's all pretty the exhaust pipes in the panels look like they're ribbons or something. It looks oh, like people wow. dancing. And it's so it's all very you abstract. Know, kind yeah, of. you don't okay. really quite know what you're looking at. That's fine. It's definitely a fun movie to watch a second yes, time. Yes, big a lot recommend to, to watch it another time because there's so much to look at. And I even found myself wanting to rewind it a couple times, even though we didn't just for time's sake. But there <laughs> were things where I hours. wanted to rewatch scenes over again because there's so much to take in. And I guess for anyone listening or watching who's on the fence about whether or not they want to watch it, yeah. let's give some uh, caveats, recommendations. First off, we we both enjoy the movie a lot. Yeah. Uh, so there's that going for it. But if you're worried about it being too scary, uh, it's not... It's it's disturbing. Yeah, I think it's very disturbing. <laughs> very. I was very like viscerally disturbed by this. But it's less but scary it's not... than hereditary. For instance, hereditary, to me. I think, is more of an out and out horror movie. This mm-hmm. is it's still a horror movie for sure, but it's uh... nothing's jumping out at you. No. There's no I don't know. It's horrific. It is horrific, but it's not a straight up <laughs> spooky movie. As far as the gore goes, though. There's some pretty gnarly gore in this. Yeah. And, it's and not it the cuts whole... to it like abruptly sometimes. So there's yeah. not even a way that you can like see it coming and shield your eyes. It'll cut from a conversation to close up on mangled head. Yeah. Uh, if you're disturbed by it, you might not <laughs> fare too well. Yeah. If you could handle hereditary, though, you're good. You think so? Yeah, there's head trauma in that. Yeah, but it's not as uh, brightly lit. That's for true. One. This is very perfectly lit. You can see every detail, which is really impressive, actually. Yeah, the colors and the lighting of Midsummer are one of my favorite parts about it. It's yeah. very bright, which mm-hmm. is rare for a horror movie. And uh, as you can tell by Chelsea's get up, if you're watching the video, she has a very colorful flower crown Mm -hmm. reminiscent of uh, Florence's near Mm -hmm. the end of the film. And it's very verdant, very a lot of greens in Mm -hmm. there because they're in the middle of a, I don't know, like a foresty commune in Mm -hmm. Sweden. Yeah, they're in the middle of nowhere. Mm. No cell phone service. It's important we see that shot. Oh, yeah. It's all always now. You got to establish. <laughs> this one's an easy one. It is, it, yeah. You wouldn't have it, yeah. Right, exactly. But yeah, so if you're on the fence, uh, I mean, give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> if you're sensitive, maybe not. It also has, uh, I mean, the opening scene is a... The opening scene's pretty brutal. Um, traumatic, yeah. It's a suicide thing. Yeah, if, I think if you can get through the opening scene... 
he still got some bumps on. <sighs> I'm gonna be sure real. It's hard to say. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the opening. Uh, so you meet Danny. That's Florence Pugh's character. Yeah, mm-hmm. who is like early mid 20s uh yeah the wikipedia said college students so i'm assuming undergrad because well, it specifically they're all notes working on their theses though she might be undergrad oh uh, okay the others are definitely grad students and okay. a little bit older and it's reflected in the actor's age florence Pugh, man is 23 now so it she's been 23 i thought now. she was like 26 no dude that's how old like she's will poulter is 26 27 uh her boyfriend is 26 27 yeah. She's 23. She's 23 now, so she She's would have been 22. She's dating Zach Brav. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. They're both legal adults. Sure. But I still reserve the right to What, think he's like 40-something? It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. William Jackson Harper. Mm-hmm. He is a grad student with them. That guy's 39 now. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Well done to his skincare regimen, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so... She is a college student, and it opens like in media res in the middle of the action because she has been getting some disturbing messages from her sister. It's not the first time because mm-hmm. her sister's bipolar, mm-hmm. uh, apparently, and has done this in the past, sent threatening messages, not towards her, but towards herself. Mm-hmm. But this time seems different, and it is. Yeah, but she calls her boyfriend Christian, and she at first isn't being totally upfront with why maybe she wants some company. Mm-hmm. She's like, hey, maybe we could hang out. And he's being weird about it. Well, he says he just smoked some resin. That's true. Not a good time to Not get that time this to phone get call. On. Yeah, fair. Yeah. But uh, then she reveals that, you know, she got some weird emails and all of her or all of his friends after she hangs up are kind of razzing him for having this shitty girlfriend who well, wants it's to talk Mark. on the phone. That's true. It is mostly Mark. It's mostly Mark, who's played by Will, Will Poulter. Poulter of, we know him from we know, Bandersnatch. I mean, yeah, Bandersnatch. He was, he was in a Narnia? going to be Pennywise oh. back when uh, Fukunaga was doing it. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe he's in a Narnia. He's in st- other stuff that we just haven't seen. He is, his character is just a major douche. Yeah. yeah. He's great at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's fun. But yeah, it's mostly him harping on Christian for being in this relationship that apparently he's wanting to get out of for like a year now. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately for Christian, it's he's not going to have a chance to do it after this opening scene. Because, yeah, mm-hmm. it turns out the sister uh, does, in fact, not only kill herself, but also their parents. Their parents, yeah. By means of carbon monoxide poisoning, the car's mm-hmm. running in the garage, hoses are going up, taped into the parents' room. I mean, the way this is all revealed is so well done oh, and man. traumatic. Because you, it's, cause, yeah, you see the shot of the fire department turning off the ignition of the car, so you know, oh, fuck, it's a garage thing. But then you realize, well, there's no one in the car, and then you see there's hoses, and you're like, well, oh, fuck, where's this going? And you think it's going to go up, and you're following the hose up the stairs, and you think it's going to go into the sister's room, but then you realize it's the parents. And then you see the sister also who has it like taped, taped to her. her mouth. It's really graphic. And, and like the shot pushes past her sister up to her computer and it, where it's like four All new the messages, messages from, from Danny. Yeah, this seemed like... <sighs> And it's raining outside. It's snowing. Fl- it's like oh, that yeah. There's like flurries, yeah. and it's like the red and flashing police lights, which come in a lot in uh, Danny's like hallucinations later. Mm-hmm. Those are always kind of flashing around. But even before that, I think one of the first shots is Danny calling and leaving a message, and you see uh, the camera pans from the answering machine in the parents' bedroom over to the parents who are sleeping. And we actually noted the second time through the dad's. The dad is... Chest is still... Mm-hmm. Bl- so, like, if they had heard that phone call, it could have changed. Yeah. But, yeah, it's rough. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, the scene is... is uh Because, like, I I have family who are bipolar, and, mm-hmm. like, it's... So, that this scene hit a little close to home, not in a bad way, in a way that I instantly was, like, on Danny's side, this movie, you mm-hmm. know? Just... And also, we see that she also is on medication at least Ativan um which is basically it's a um 
It's a anti-anxiety medication. Okay. I've I've been prescribed Ativan before. I thought so, yes. Yeah, I took familiar. note of all the different types of self-medication in this movie, which I thought was really interesting. That oh. we like very pointedly get a shot of the Ativan and Mark's vaping a bunch when yeah, they first get she's there. asking for sleeping pills. Mm-hmm. There's just all kinds of yeah. A lot on. of drugs. This is a this drug is movie. Lots of drugs yes. in this movie. This is a very much a drug movie. Yeah. But also just like winter too is when cause we were just talking about this because daylight savings is when no, it just happened. Uh it ju- no, it happens tonight, actually. It literally happens when tonight. We're okay. shooting That's tonight. right. Yeah. Okay, it happens tonight. And we were just talking about how for many of us, the lack of daylight during winter is just it's a depressant like I feel like shit immediately just Mm -hmm. that lack of sunlight and it getting dark out so early so I associate winter with bad shit because that's when statistically that is the most likely to happen Mm -hmm. and so yeah this this opening scene was like too real and her grief when she because we find out about it kind of through Christian getting another call from her and he's like hey what's up and you just hear like screaming no and yeah. that's when it cuts to the cops turning off the ignition it but. really i yeah i yeah winter i is like the season for those kinds of phone calls unfortunately yeah, yeah. and then yeah christian you see him like walking through the snowy flurry and getting there and just holding her mm-hmm. as she cries and not really doing anything yeah i i noted this time that when he's holding her and she's crying just and again i think Ari Aster, it's a combination of, yes, Ari Aster is an amazing director and gets amazing performances out of his leading women, but he also is just really good at casting women who can bring it and can cry like no one else. Yeah. Yeah. You just feel it. But uh, I I took note this time that uh, when Christian's holding her and she's crying, they're not looking at each other. Mm Mm-hmm. They're there, just patting her, and it's very, oh, God, which, to be fair, yeah, that would be... Yeah. If you're in a relationship with someone you want to break up with and then that happens, that that's a lot sucks. of feelings. <laughs> yeah. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, man, this is... So, like, I, you know, he's a shitty boyfriend, but I empathize with him. He is a... he. They are very bad together. Yes. Very... And he's, you know, he's a bit of a shit ball. <laughs> with the whole uh, dissertation that thing that yeah, happens yeah I mean he's a bad friend too yeah he's a bad friend and a bad boyfriend I don't he's not like an evil guy no 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 he's, he, just, he's just shitty he's just he, he's, he's bad selfish. at communicating he's selfish but like yeah it's just and it's so bad because if they if he had just broken up with her prior to all this things would have been different but like he and then you can't break up with her then not after that. Well, we see so much in this movie how he is really bad at being honest and upfront with people. And I think that's why they're just stuck in this relationship. I yeah. think he can't break up with her. Yeah, he's not confrontational. Mm-hmm. He can't he can't do that. Mm-hmm. And even Josh, I mean, immediately says, Do you think that you're avoiding this because you're also avoiding figuring out your dissertation? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's all over. I do wanna say really quick that that shot where it it like pushes through the window and the credits and all that me- like that. Oh, I love. Oh, Ugh. but you know what? It's great. I hate how goddamn hard the credits are to see. Like, and they're really tiny. They're very tiny. To and be very fair, faint. we had this on in the middle of the afternoon, and it was streaming too. But even in the theater when we saw it, I remember being like, "I can't use that for a title card joke because you can <laughs> barely so fucking small. read it." There's snow flurries everywhere. <laughs> I just, I don't know the the like push into the snow and it's mm-hmm. dark and the music the gets music. louder and it's incredible. It just feels like I'm about to watch some like some shit. Like, it this does. Is I mean, the whole movie, movie feels like an epic. A yeah. like, oh yeah, you know, it's like it's like the, like The Shining when you put it on mm-hmm. and it's like because uh, <laughs> I just we were just listening to the We Love Movies Friends of the Pod, yeah, and they covered The Shining. And it's like yeah, you put on The Shining. It's like I'm gonna fucking watch The Shining. It's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, and that's how it feels with Midsummer. It's like we're in this seat for the next two and a half mm-hmm. hours yeah. for a fully realized cinematic adventure. Uh, after that, it is now spring because it's much brighter and happier outside. Yeah. Outside though, because inside Florence is laying in like a shadow on her bed. It's mm-hmm. just so dark with, I think, a bear. I noted too that everyone in these opening scenes and I think pretty much like mostly through the movie, at least for the guys, everyone's wearing navy blues, dark greens, grays. Everyone's in these very 
dark, depressing colors. They all kind of match. It's weird. Mm. Everyone's wearing, or maybe that's just the grad student outfit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They're all in hoodies and stuff. They go to a party. Uh, she brings, makes herself go to this party, essentially. Because mm-hmm. because Christian is like, Cle- I'm just going to duck out to he, this party for 45 yeah, no, minutes. Yeah, no, I'm just going to, oh, sure. have you gotten enough sleep? He's clearly just, like, just say, I'm going to go. You know, it was well, just, you can't say I don't want you to go. Well, just say it's like a small thing. It's me and the boys. I don't know. But that's I don't know. They're li- that is a lie. Yeah. 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 It's a it's a shitty position because he just wants to go and escape this. You see how she is. And like she has every right to be. Right. But it also sucks for him. It's it's that's it the sucks. thing with this movie. It is sucks. It, <laughs> it's such an accurate depiction of this poor relationship. I mean, he really is trapped. Yeah. In- Right, so that's why, again, his fate, I think, makes complete sense. Oh, man. Even if you don't think it's deserved, which, like, it's probably not, it's still visually and with what the story is trying to tell us, it makes sense that he dies the way he dies. Yeah. But, yeah, they go to this party, and that's where she finds out that he's... Oops, they're all going to Sweden. (laughs) Yep, this has been planned for a while, even though he said, apparently to her, it'd be cool to go. We're thinking, we're just, we're thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, and he'd already bought a ticket. mm -hmm, The shot of them in the backseat of the car driving home from the party where they're just, like, not talking, that's another one that just rings so true. Yeah. And then, yeah, they get back home, and she finally confronts him about it, and... I love that shot. She's talking to him, and the way it's framed is... We can see him in a mirror. It's, like, a like kind of a long, tall mirror. Mm-hmm. So we see him on the left side and her on the right. Lots of mirrors and reflections, reflections in this yeah. movie. Did you take like note of that TV? this time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and TVs on, on the table at one point, like, way later. Mm-hmm. Uh, but lots of different reflections and stuff, which is cool. I, I kept note of that, too, and it does pay off later visually, which is pretty neat. Oh, when are you? Uh, the big cry scene. There's a lot of interesting mirroring happening there, oh, which I okay. think is neat. Yeah. Cool. But um, yeah, I, I like that it's, they can't communicate directly. So of course we are seeing them have at least the beginning of this argument reflected through mirrors and it's not a direct, we're not seeing them looking at each other. We're seeing them like, it's weird. It's yeah. a, a weird framing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he says he, that he just decided today. That's a lie. And then he's like, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Like, and, <laughs> and it's interesting when they do, when they are talking in the scene and they're talking to each other, because they do move into frame together. When that happens, that's when Danny starts feeling guilty for even bringing it up. And that's when she starts saying, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. I I thought you should be. So I'm sorry. And she starts second guessing herself. And mm-hmm. that's where we see, you know, a lot of people have called um, like what his character does to her gaslighting. And I, I think, you know, some of it's pretty gaslighty. Yeah, it's definitely dishonest at the very least. Yeah. And I, it's almost as though she's gaslighting herself with her, like, anxiety. Because we see her on the uh, uh, the phone with a friend earlier before, like, she finds out about her family. And she's like, what if I'm pushing him too hard and, like, I'm leaning on him too much? So, like, I think a lot of that is self-induced anxiety that's made worse by his inability to be straightforward with her right again this relationship is so doomed yeah yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) but then also he's saying you know she's making perfectly fair points and she is saying things that did happen we saw these things happen and he's then kind of pushing it back at her and making her second guess whether or not what she's saying happened actually happened. So I think that is a little ghastly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just, you know, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it just, it just felt really weird. Okay. But it, I'm fine. I think it's great that you're going to Sweden. I do. I think it's amazing. And then he, I think it's the next day or whatever. And he's going to his friend's place where they're all studying up on Sweden and preparation for their trip. Yeah, and this, again, we're seeing Christian reflection. in the mirror mm-hmm. because he is doing his thing where he's coming up with another lie. <laughs> it, you see him a lot reflected in mirrors because you cannot get a direct anything out of him. Yeah. So when we see him reflected in this mirror and we see his friends uh, sitting in like the foreground, this is when he's telling them, okay, I invited her, but she's not going to go. But pretend like we want her to go and you guys told me to invite and you her. guys also told me to do this okay but don't worry she's not gonna go and they're like she doesn't want to go and he's like she's not gonna go right okay <laughs> trust me all that stuff that just happened she's not gonna go 
And then, yeah, she gets there and she's like, yeah, I guess I'm going with you guys if that's cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, The only one who makes an effort to actually communicate with her is Pele, who we haven't mentioned yet. He is the person who is from Sweden, whose uh, home commune, community? Commune. Commune, there you go. Uh, That's where they're going. That's where they're visiting because he has a big... Fest, um, it's a. I actually took. N- I took like good notes this time on the the timeline of events and how often things happen in their commune because Every that 90 was years. Yeah, so this was something that people were confused by when it first came out in mm. like reviews and stuff and on Reddit threads or whatever, but. So every 90 years they have this big festival. Yeah. But every year they do the May Queen thing where okay. they appoint their May Queen because Pele shows her a picture. This is last year's May Queen. So that's something they do every year. It just so happens that the May Queen festival and this every 90 years midsummer festival are coinciding at this point. And I would imagine every year they also do the Adastupa. They kind of have to. Whenever, whenever they Whenever someone's to. turning 72. 73? Is it when they turn 73? Oh, I think it would I be when they turn 72. you get to live out the 72. 73. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but yes, this he Pele is the only one who because she starts talking with him and he tries to bring Josh into the conversation and Josh just doesn't he, react. He, yeah, because like you want to like Josh because he's not the abrasive douchey guy that Mark is. Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, I'll like Josh, but he's kind of closed off. Yeah, I he's interesting because I couldn't quite like pin down what his character was the first time. We saw this. And this time I think I had a bit of a better sense of what was going on with him. Because he's just another way that the people that she is surrounded by, who like aren't even her friends. Yeah, they're um, Christian's friends. Yeah, they're Christian's friends. But it's just another way that they cannot give her the support that she needs. So we see Christian cannot directly communicate with her at all. And he you know he he lies he makes her second guess herself he does this to josh later with the the thesis so this is something he does to it seems like everyone in Mm -hmm. his life it's how he deals with conflict and difficult situations but josh is i feel like he is all head and no emotions yeah because this whole so yeah like you said he as soon as um pele is kind of you know talking to danny he pieces out. He goes he, to microwave some coffee. Uh, <laughs> yeah, has, relatable. Like, there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but he is, we always see him on his laptop. We see him trying to relate to the people, the commune through things that he knows. So things that he knows from his thesis. He, anytime he's trying to engage in conversation, it's not like an actual conversation. It's, oh, this is like this, 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 this. Wow. Uh, I, I think the Saki Saints do the same thing in Braj Bumi. He's just so focused on knowledge. And He's always asking questions. Yes. Always asking questions at the community. Like, not just to learn that because information. Because he wants to, yeah. So he he lacks a focus on actually relating to someone in conversations. Why we always see him on his computer. It's why we never see him actually talk to Danny in any meaningful way or any like emotional way. He just gives her, he gives her sleeping pills. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a very indirect way of comforting someone because he is helping her sleep by giving her pills, but there's no emotion there. It's just, here you go. The most emotion we do see from him, I think is during the Adestupa when it, when it happens, but right afterward when Christian's like, that was crazy. Are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. Tap, 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 tap. Yeah, he's yeah. taking all his notes. He's taking yeah. all his notes. So I think yeah. that's what he kind of represents. He's is... the removed academic. Yeah. You know, the the only cerebral yeah. approach to everything. When you try and live life through a purely analytical mindset, you are lacking something really crucial to kind of a human experience and relating to other people. Yeah, because even in that first scene at the bar, when Mark is razzing uh, uh, Christian for still being with Danny, the first thing Josh, the, Josh's first dialogue is your thesis, it, and it's a, and it's framed in a question too. Yeah. He's like, "Do you think that you're making this dramatic in order to avoid doing your dissertation? Like, it's related to the academics. It's a question. It's cerebral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people go into it just uh, predisposed to like him because of the actor, especially right. if you watch The Good Place." 
uh, which we only watched a few episodes of, but he seems like a likable guy. Mm -hmm. So you go into this and you want to like him. And he's not a bad guy. He's just... No, he just... You know? He just is not the person Danny needs right now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, Uh, at all. (laughs) And then then Mark is just, like, the fool, literally. Yeah, yeah. At the end, he's turned into the fool. But I I also think that Pele is not good. Although... Oh, no, he... So, something I, I... Weirdly, I was writing this in my notes, and then when I was kind of looking up the movie after and reading stuff that Ari Aster said about it, Ari Aster, and I think this was kind of a throwaway joke um, that people have taken and run with and maybe have taken too seriously, and Ari Aster's like, no, 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 I just was saying that and being goofy, but he said that this movie is like The Wizard of Oz for perverts. Okay. And <laughs> I also, I think people have taken it a bit too far. Yeah. I don't think that that, this, that was his like, thesis He didn't statement. write it with, yeah. He wasn't like, okay, here's where we're going with this, but... um. Fuck, what was I even gonna because say? Because what? Uh uh Josh oh, yeah, would be all Okay. So I uh and I was reading a Reddit thread about that quote of Ari Aster's and someone was like, Well, what does that make Pele? And then someone goes, Oh, well, Pele's the tornado, which is exactly <laughs> what he is. He's the thing that takes them to brings Oz. them there, and he's not a good thing, but he does take Dorothy to Oz and he <laughs> is the one that sets it all in motion and just fucks up their lives, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I he, think he's it... an interesting character because yeah he seems the most sympathetic he immediately in that scene after because mark pulls christian off into the back room to look at a paragraph oh can you come look at this paragraph yeah okay, just to dude. ream him for inviting <laughs> danny along mm-hmm. josh is nuking his coffee mm-hmm. and pele is actually apparently trying to make an actual connection with her uh, uh saying that he's real sorry for what happened to her family yes face to face i'm sorry that this happened to you they're talking about the thing that happened which we never see christian Jen and Danny do Mm -hmm. so that's kind of interesting and he brings it up again later when they're at uh is Hargis the name of the community or the place I think it's both Both? okay so we may also heads up we'll probably pronounce oh we're gonna pronounce everything I mean I've already tried to say at a stupa bunch and I'm sure it's awful we're sorry (laughs) and uh also I feel like I've seen at least one comment say that you know midsummer depicts a Swedish uh, community and it's it's like not accurate and they're if they had done this with maybe a different culture they wouldn't have been able to get away with it so there's that ca- caveat you know yeah but maybe I also this is not accurate watching this I think it's made clear that this isn't meant to represent Swedish culture they're their own thing they're a cult they're a cult because we see a bunch of times especially Josh keeps asking well can I write about this, can I take photos, blah, blah, blah. And they say, you, you're going to have to change names, location. So it is, why would that be the case if he was, you know, if this movie and then their theses were about Swedish culture? Like, no, 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 they, this is about this. You know, I think it's taking elements of Swedish culture and really fucking them up, you know? But I think all the times where Pele is like, you're not getting any... Love from yeah, do Christian. Yeah, you feel held by him? Yeah, and then I think at the end when he gives her like a big mouth kiss, I think Pele's just trying to. He's just he's into her he's for just sure. Into her. I think I don't know. I think some of that is genuine. I think he he comes off to me as someone who, and I guess like all the people in this cult do. I don't think anyone in this cult is like purposely nefarious. Oh, I think bullshit. That, They're bringing outsiders into their place to kill. I know, but that's the thing is they're so steeped in their own shit that they think this is normal and fine. No, no, they're they're evil. They're evil cult members. I know, I'm not (laughs) saying that they're good, but I'm saying in their heads, it's not like, yes, I'm going to trick her to be my pagan bride. I think it's like, I think he genuinely is feeling those emotions of like, I think he has empathy for her. I think he feels sure. bad. Yeah. I'm not saying that makes him good, but I'm just saying like like in their heads, in their inner worlds, I think that what they think they're doing is good. That no, I I don't buy that for they think it's good for the outsiders they are bringing there to kill. I don't know. I think I wonder if they're so into it though that they think this is part of you know, it's an honor for them. Maybe. 
That's what's scary about cults. But that's that's why, you know, the Adestupa, they're like, it's an honor when I turn 72 or whatever. It's I will gladly do it. It will be an honor, even though fuck that shit. It sucks. Yeah, but that's voluntary. But that's, I know, but that's how I think they feel about these, you know, it's an honor. It's all it's the cycle. Not saying it's good, but I just think they are. I think that makes them scarier. But they, the but, fact that they are like, no, 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 this is all good and beautiful. But they're purposefully deceiving and lying to the couple from London in order to kill them. Yeah. You know, if they purpose, if they really believed that it was good and that everyone would be okay with it, they wouldn't have to deceive them like that. No, but I, I think, I think maybe we're arguing slightly different things. Mm. I'm saying it's. I, I think in their heads, they say, yeah, like they, they won't understand, mm-hmm. you know, they're not going to come here if we're like, we're going to sacrifice you. But in their heads, it's like, this will be worth it. This will, you know. Yeah. And I think it makes them creepier to kind of imagine all of them as like, no, no, this is a wonderful, beautiful thing that we're doing. And yeah. aren't you lucky to be part of it instead mm-hmm. of, ha we're going to kidnap the outsiders and burn them. I think they do mention something about rebirthing at that and during that last scene. Yeah. 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 I get I get what yeah, I think we were we were coming at it slightly different directions. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I love the transition after uh Pele tries to oh, talk yeah. to her about her her family and she like can't handle it. She's like, I'm sorry, I have I have to use the bathroom and she steps inside and then it uh as she does, the noise of an airplane swells, and then when she steps inside, it's like an overhead shot oh, going over so it. Cool. And now she's in the bathroom on the airplane. It's so and on their cool. way there. It's so great. I wonder if if they built that set like that so oh. it's just the airplane bathroom going off of the living room because it's so cool yeah God, i love i love that that's such a cool because then you get you don't have to watch them get on the plane mm-hmm. you don't have to you don't have to see any of that stuff they're we there. get yeah they're there and that's it so yeah now they're in sweden they land and uh start driving north yeah will's checking out some swedish babes that are on the sidewalk and he's saying why are the women here so hot Tell me, Pele. No, well, Josh has the academic answer. Because... Which is an interesting answer considering what happens. Oh, later. you're right. Yeah. He says that uh they went and what like Vikings, Vikings went, went and stole the, the best women from other cultures and brought them back. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Right there. Yep. <laughs> again, this movie tells you what's gonna happen. Pretty like watching it again, it's it's pretty in your face about it. Yeah, it's definitely worth a rewatch mm-hmm. uh, and paying attention to lines of dialogue like that. On their way to Hargis, they stop in like a meadow pretty much. Oh, there is b- our transition into Oz, essentially. Oh, the upside down. Is a shot love- that begins upright and then flips upside down mm-hmm. and it doesn't. Uh, uh, become right side up again until after they pass under like the banner that says coming to Hargis land or whatever. So yeah. yeah. I love that shot because it made me, and maybe this is just because I like theme parks so much, but the upside down road where the road's on like the top of the screen and there's the stripe going down the middle for some reason it reminded me of a like a track on a ceiling like you know the peter pan ride Mm -hmm. where there's the the ceiling track and the for some reason it just it reminded me of that and the idea of you're just stuck on a ride and you can't get off oh yeah i don't know if that's intentional at all but that visual is what that made me think of i want to know how they did that shot i'm assuming it wasn't a drone that flew over and then flew upside down perfectly at pace in front of this car i'm assuming it was done in post but I'd like to know for sure. Yeah, it's it's a nice shot. Yeah. Yeah, so they go to this, they make a pit stop in this field where he said, what, it's it's some other people who from his <laughs> cult who have <laughs> also gotten back from their, like, time away. They have yes. Rumspringa, kind of. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And his friend Ingmar? Ingmar, yeah. Ingmar, like who has director. brought Simon and Connie from London, an English couple. Poor Simon and Connie. Poor Simon. Simon and Connie are my uh, uh, my rock, my central argument against this cult and the reason I hate them. Because oh, yeah. with oh, the friends- I am not, as I'm completely dressed like a member <laughs> of the cult. No, 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 I am not. Uh, and this is something once we get to the end of the movie, which is like so mm-hmm. like <laughs> controversial and everyone's got their own opinions on it. I think, yeah, no, the cult's no good. Yeah. 
Because the others all disrespect them in some way. Simon and Connie are totally innocent as far as we can tell. Right. And they... I think they're kind of a key to showing the cult is bad. I don't think Ari Aster thinks the cult is good. I think he's even said so in interviews that... It's not a happy ending? No. Or it's... It's both. It's not It's not a cut and dry answer mm-hmm. to how the ending should make you feel or how he feels about the ending, I think, is complicated, as it should be and as it can be. Not everything needs to be, you know, black and white. Yeah. Yeah. But and yeah, yeah the, in this meadow. Innocent people, I think, are the key to. Definitely. They're there for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in this meadow, they all take shrooms. Yes, uh, they do. <laughs> Danny doesn't want to take them right now. Christian's okay. like, I'll wait with you. Mark's like, but we got to do them all together. And then Danny's like, all right, I I'll fucking do hate Mark so much. <laughs> I know, Mark is here's, such okay, a dick. just like s- drug safety tips. Yeah. Don't do hallucinogens if you're thinking, I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah. You don't do it. Then, you don't, yeah, then don't do you it. You don't take the drugs because mm-hmm. you're going to have a bad time. Yep. If you're set, set and setting. Set and setting. And this is, she's not in a good headspace she's not she's not with people she particularly likes yeah. her and her boyfriend are having a bad time it's just none of it's good no none of it is good but yeah she... uh set and setting by the way refers to set is like your mood and headspace essentially your mindset yeah. yeah exactly your mindset and setting is of course where you are and if you're gonna do a hallucinogen be safe about it uh, don't do it if you're underage and set and setting are things to keep in mind. Right. Have them be good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, speaking of trips, this movie is, this is the first of many hallucinogenic mm-hmm. substances imbibed by these people. Yeah. And this movie captures a drug trip so accurately. Yes. And I am right before Danny starts really tripping. I think it's before she drinks the tea. She is kind of, you know what? No, it's fine. I'm ready. I'm fine. It's fine. It's, you know, and then I think she's talking herself into, I can, as someone who has very bad anxiety, I relate to this so hard where you realize, oh no, my anxiety is ruining everyone else's fun. I need to get over it. I need to get over it. I can make myself get over this. I'm not going to be the one who ruins everyone's time because I'm freaking out and I'm not ready to do something. I just... I relate to it really bad. <laughs> and to Christian's credit here, in this scene, he is like, don't do, don't rush yourself. Don't listen to fucking Mark. Mm-hmm. Don't have him be the one who pressures you into it. Mm-hmm. But it's essentially Mark does pressure right. Danny into doing it. Right. Because yeah. she doesn't want to be the holdout. Right. So, yeah, they all take shrooms and then they're sitting there. This is so funny. This is so I love funny. this scene. They're like, what time is it? It's 9 p.m. What? That can't be right. The sky is blue. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's okay. The We're midnight in sun. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't like that. It's not supposed to be like that. Mark is the worst person to have on a trip because he's like, he's freaking out about the midnight sun. And then he's like, I'm going to lay down. Guys, you have to lay you down. You have to. Everyone do this thing. Yeah. Josh, could you please lay down? Yeah. And Pele is definitely the most experienced one. He's just in there like. Do you feel the earth breathing? Yeah. Like, it's okay, Mark. <laughs> and then fucking. Ra- oh, my God. This is, this might be the funniest part of the movie where yeah. this random dude walks by. He's all dressed in white. I think he has a flower crown on already. And they're, he's, someone goes, is it Christian? Maybe yeah. he goes, oh, my God. There's another person here. <laughs> and my, and yeah. Mark's like, I don't want new people right now. No, new people are good, Mark. And then that guy just passes by and is like, hello. (laughs) It's so great. Oh, man. It's so good. But But yeah, the trees are breathing and Danny sees grass grass growing. Lots of of focus on breath and breathing in this movie. Even consider the way that her family died is inhalation and suffocation. It's all like lots of breath and ins and outs in this movie. Yeah. Just pulsating. Yeah. Which is, you know, a lot of hallucinogens will be this way. A lot of movies tend to be too surreal. Like, yeah, they're like, you know, the Beavis and Butthead animation. Which the, is, by which the is way, great. one of my, fa- I'm not even <laughs> joking. It's one of my favorite sequences of film. The uh, mushroom, or no, it's the peyote, I, I think they yeah. find in the desert. Um, and it's, a Rob Zombie uh, animated That's segment right. to a that, white yeah. zombie song. And it's no joke. One of my favorite film. Look it up on YouTube. It's like the most gorgeous animation I've ever seen. Yeah, okay. From Beavis and Bud to America. Yeah. But a lot of movies, when they show a character tripping, they're like seeing penguins run around or like seeing crazy shit. 
most of the time a hallucinogen will do this kind of thing it just textures and patterns and will be colors like colors will be brighter brighter and... colors yeah things just kind of like weaving and uh yeah but then the downside of a hallucinogen is if something happens like again danny's in a bad headspace she hears someone say the word family and mm-hmm. that's it and her that's trip it. is bad and she um she has a freak out she thinks a bunch of people are laughing at her which is like a creepy moment and then we see ingmar say hey are you okay and she says they're all laughing at me and he goes no here come meet my friends and his face you could see it more in theaters when the screen oh, I didn't was even big catch it this time through i remember it, seeing it's it in harder the to notice on mm-hmm. the tv it's smaller um this is why i go see movies in theaters <laughs> if you can because you'll notice shit but his face is just slightly it's digitally altered his smile's a little too big and his eyes i think are a little too big as well it's just like so slightly there but it's really creepy so yeah. then she runs away and she runs into a she runs to a bathroom building and looks in a mirror no 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 See don't something behind do that her. yeah it's her sister oh it is her sister oh the, fuck yeah it's and she runs her. out of there and into the woods and then i guess passes out for six hours when she runs into the woods it reminded me of snow white when she's running through the scary forest mm-hmm. and stuff this whole thing is like oh it's very yeah, fairy tale ish, which always it keeps these newer movies. And whenever we analyze them, it's lots of fairy tale motifs yeah. and stuff. It's That's interesting. Fun. Good yeah. thing we uh, spent a few years getting drunk and watching Disney movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Learn those fairy tales. <laughs> um, yeah, she, yeah, she wakes up and she doesn't even know what day it is because the sun there is all weird. I, I would kind of dig that. Just constant sun. Yeah. That'd is be... it tomorrow? Well, from yesterday's perspective. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Then they get to the commune. They finally get there. They walk through the woods. A it's really cool far. overhead shot showing them go through it. They, they fuck with Mark about ticks. That's really funny. Mm-hmm. But they get there and yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful small farm community everyone's dressed in white my favorite fucking thing is starting with the yes. overhead shot <laughs> is like flute music it's playing. this really beautiful music and this whole man the music in this movie is i i noticed it even more this time it's just so pretty it's and very effective. i love the music in it's this. sometimes pretty sometimes sinister yeah and like yeah, yeah scary you know I love it. like even when they're doing the may uh queen dance it's like a little uh, discordant. It yeah. makes me feel not safe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you hear these these flutes. It's all these woodwinds and stuff. And then we see a panning shot of the village and there's cows and people picking flowers. And then we keep panning and we see that the music is diegetic. There's a <laughs> yeah. group of dudes playing flutes and that like is so funny. This movie's very funny. It's very funny. And there's some very what the fuck we always, humor. We've always, um, I don't know if we've, done this on the podcast but definitely in like commentary tracks we've debated horror comedies and what types we like what types we don't like i'm picky when it comes to comedy i just have a a very specific sense of humor and very particular things make me laugh and like this to me is my style of horror comedy where the comedy is it's secondary to everything else that's going on that's not the point of it but when it lands it's so funny Mm -hmm. to me i think i just need it couched in a lot of fucked up shit (laughs) i need it to take itself mostly seriously and then have some funny in it and that makes me laugh the most yeah Mm -hmm. so yeah they're there finally we're here and uh they mentioned like one of the guys is in a gown and he says oh it's very girly right it's very girly because uh, he mentions it's the hermaphroditic qualities of nature as mm-hmm. they say just uh i don't know the details of their belief system or just uh nordic belief systems but i can buy that what nature being of both of sexes both sexes yeah yes. that's something that too plays into and i don't know a ton about this so maybe i'm you know i could be saying something totally off but that's something where in christian belief we have male female it's like the sexes are divided. They are separate. That's why when we see depictions of Baphomet, who is like, not the devil, or is, no, he's like a demon. He's a demon. He's like the goat head and he's sitting with his legs crossed. He's like oh, who yeah. the satanic temple will get like statues built of as yeah. protest, basically. <laughs> um, but Baphomet has breasts and a penis. Okay. And so it's, there's always been that fear you know, of like, yeah, hermaphroditic 
imagery and stuff like weird gender bending sex bending kind of stuff in and, the christian belief you're saying right. yeah yeah mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff going on. There's a bunch of kids running around holding hands. Apparently, they're playing Skin the Fool. Skin the Fool. Which comes to fruition later. Fun games to play. Among them playing the game is a redhead, Maya. Maya. Who gives a little kick to Christian and gives him some eyes. Mm -hmm. So, apparently, she's already set her sights on I just remember thinking when we were seeing this in the theater, I was like, oh, I could play. Maya would be, like, a fun character to play. She'd be like, I could do that. I could run around and just be kind of creepy. And then it gets to that scene, and I'm like, just kidding. (laughs) I don't think I could do that. (laughs) That's, you know, yeah, that's a brave role to take. Oh, yeah. Uh, All those women and... uh, I, I want to the actor's say his name. name. Yeah, Jack Rayner. Jack. Yeah, I uh, we're gonna spend plenty of time talking about that scene, but I love the use of nudity in this movie. I think it's wonderful. It's mm-hmm. very frank. Yes. Which I I always yeah. It's not really. I sexy. love frank nudity. Yeah. No, there's nothing <laughs> sexy about this movie. No, no, there's not. There's sex. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not sexy. It's not very sexy. It's uh, played for laughs. There's your fucking comedy right there. Yeah. <laughs> Pele wishes Danny happy birthday, and that's when she tells Pele, yeah, Christian forgot. Yeah. So, Because he gives her a little birthday drawing, because he's like a yeah artist of sorts. He, yeah, he draws some stuff. He has a little sketchbook. Mm-hmm. So he apparently, he says, I do these for birthdays. He mm-hmm. gives- a little bit of a, a, I don't want to say colonial, just a commentary when... Christian asks how he can get in on the skin the cat game and Pele's like, you're an American, just jam yourself <laughs> yeah, in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which I mean, which is kind of what Christian and Josh and Mark are doing here. It's it's so weird. I don't know what their expectations were. Josh is obviously coming here with an academic purpose in mind. Mm-hmm. Christian is coming here what, to run away. I think Christian has, I think he is someone who in the moment has trouble being motivated to do things or to start things or to like come up with things on his own or find passion for things that are his own passions. And I think he is the type of person who is like, you know what? I'm going to go on this trip and I'll figure something out there. Cause something there will inspire me and I'll be able to do it. Yeah. And yeah. then Mark is treating it like a fucking spring break. He trip. wants it to be spring break. Yeah. yeah. He wants like chicks and dirndls and, Chicks and what? Dern, the, like the the German like Octo like Oktoberfest beer lady. Oh sure, yeah. Like just heaving. Oh breasts. The, yeah, 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 yeah. That, I think that's what he. That's what he wants. He wants to do drugs and yeah, get laid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like he came to the wrong place. Man. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's just going where his friends are going. I think Pele probably let. I think. Let him I think. I that. think Pele maybe lied a little bit about what the what the sexual activities <laughs> were gonna be like at the commune. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, you want to talk about our sponsor real quick? Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. We love Hello Fresh. We love getting meals delivered. It's so mm, nice. Yeah. Yeah, cuz we always say we're very bad at uh shopping. Yeah, cuz you got to make sure you get stuff that like you can use in a timely manner before it goes bad. Mm-hmm. And, oh, I got this thing. I just bought some zucchini yeah. just in case forgot to use the zucchini that happens all the time yep now it's just a rotted zucchini in my fridge now you can get all of your meal ingredients delivered it's everything measured out perfectly so you don't have any waste which is good food waste is bummer Mm -hmm. that's a big problem no problem yeah and uh there's also different preferences you can set for HelloFresh too so we get the vegetarian boxes from them i think they also have a they have a kids friendly one yeah everything is really easy too it's about 30 minutes per meal prep so that's very very nice yeah and it's nice to just have uh food delivered to your door that's not like fast food yeah it's food that you can cook and you can see what goes into it so you know it's the convenience of fast food but much healthier right exactly mm-hmm. yeah not a ton of processed stuff it's like actually actual vegetables yeah. what a novelty yeah and if you you know if you are not used to cooking or you have a hard time figuring out where to even start that's what hello fresh is for man yeah With, they give you the ingredients they give you the recipe you just gotta read 
and listen to instructions. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So uh, for a limited time only, you can get nine free meals with HelloFresh. Nice. That's so many. Yeah. If you go to HelloFresh.com slash deadmeat9, so that's HelloFresh.com slash deadmeat9, the number nine, and enter deadmeat9. So that's nine free meals, HelloFresh.com slash Dead Meat 9. Our other sponsor this week is Columbia College and their new tuition system, Truition. This Ooh. is for their online college course. This is amazing. I, I was, you know, skeptical for often online colleges. You don't know what you're getting. Some of them are weird. Mm -hmm. But I checked this out. Columbia College is legit. And I think it's amazing that they... You don't have have to buy any books. And I remember books being so expensive yeah. when I was in school. And half the time, you barely crack them open. Mm -hmm. Or the worst is when you get a professor who makes you buy their, their book. Their own book. Buy my book. Buy my book. Yeah. None of that here. Yeah, this is not that. This is a an effort to be more transparent about what your money is going to. This is like a bare bones. And I bet there are some high school students listening to this and being like, what, their books? How much can they be? No, so much. There's so much. It's it's I don't well, hundreds I, of dollars. Hundreds of dollars. I don't know why. I don't know why they're that expensive. But yeah. yeah, you will spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on books, but not if you are doing online courses at Columbia College, which is I think is amazing. Yeah. So this uh, tuition system is for their online college, and they also have uh, like evening classes at thirty plus different locations. So if you're looking to get in some school, like if you haven't gone to college yet, or if you want to go back. This is a really great We've always option. talked about it. I know. I, I always talk about it. I'm seeing it. here they have eight-week classes. That sounds very doable. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they are. They're accredited. They have been for 100 years. I think founded in 1851. Wow. So, yeah. So, if you're looking for some affordable schooling, I think this is a great choice because that school is uh, really expensive. It's real expensive. Yeah. So, if you are interested in this, you can apply today at mytruition.com slash deadmeat. It's, it's like two but T R U I T I O N. Yeah. Slash so my truition. Yes. Dot com slash dead me. Yes. Yeah. Check it out. They're shown around. There's a really funny line where Ingmar, is that his name? Ingmar? Ingmar, Sorry. yeah. Yeah. He's, he's showing uh, Simon and Connie around, and Simon's like, we're just going to ignore the bear. <laughs> it's a bear. It's a bear. There's a bear There's in a cage. There's a bear there. in a cage. We see, then they want to take a look at this tapestry that. Oh, my God. <gasps> I'm obsessed with the tapestry and just that whole thing. Just going to head this off. Not going to put this on a wall in any future house of ours. I'm sorry. <sighs> not when... Even if it was the one from the movie. Because I would kill. Like the get... actual fucking yes, I would screen you. kill used. to get my hands on Man, that. you can have it in your own, your side of the it bedroom or something. Be, it would just have to be wrapped around the walls of a room. Yeah. You couldn't like have it out. I don't stretched. need that m that much pubic hair on any dining room wall. Yeah, or that's fair. That'd be such a great kitchen decoration. Though. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> That'd be the opposite of a good kitchen because it depicts. It's a something... it's a very long tapestry <laughs> yeah. of a. It's it. He goes, oh, it's a love story. That's mm -hmm. how he explains it. And so we pan. It goes right to the left, which is interesting. Which is weird, but I think it's still red in order from the, what we see. It's not like we're seeing the end first. No, no, it just is red from yeah. right to left. Yeah, which, yeah. what I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. That's Swedish or what? I don't. I think they I read. Yeah, I think they read left, left to right. right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the the pictures depict a woman who uh, cuts off. Some of her pubic hair. Bakes it in a pie. Yep. And then uses some of her menstrual blood. Period blood and puts it in lemonade. I don't know. It looks like lemonade to me, but. Gives those tasty treats to a dude and then they're in love. Yeah. And then she gets pregnant. The end. The end. It's beautiful. It's a love story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get my hands on that banner, dude. Oh, no. if anyone watching this works at uh, A24. Please don't contact us. Please. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to just get a really big poster tube in the mail one day. Oh, no. Um, so, okay. They're showing them around and they show them their sleeping quarters and they open up the doors. This this scene gave me chills this time because, again, it's the music and um, just the way that we have this built, the inside of this building revealed the sets in this movie are immaculate. They're so gorgeous. Yeah, I'm sure they just built this place. I think they built this whole village. Yeah, for and, sure. And because I mean, that's what they did with the witch. This is much bigger yes, than a <laughs> than a failed farm. Uh, it's a whole fucking commune. But yeah, I bet they just built it all up, man. Yeah. Yeah. And so they go into this building. This is where all the youngins sleep. I think up to age. 
36, which fuck that shit. You're sleeping in a twin bed until you're 36. In a fucking barn with dozens of other people. This building is, all the walls are painted with these scenes and runes. That whole bit gives me chills. It's so gorgeous. And then Christian tries to, because we overhear a side conversation with Pele and Christian where like they're, you can gather that they're talking about how he forgot Danny's birthday. Christian's like, oh, fuck. So he tries to make it up with her with like, what bread is that? I know. It's, it's like a fucking it's, piece of bread with a candle It looks in it. like a bun. Like he took a slice out of a bunt cake that no one like, wanted and birthday. stuck a candle. And he can't light the candle, which is so, that's funny. so funny. That's such he a good so choice. Hard. God, yeah. that's such a funny choice. And like those, there's a group of women in the background with a baby just swaying back and forth. <laughs> yeah. And it's like just, just weird. <laughs> It's all uncomfortable. She's distracted by this group. Um, this is the same scene, too, where Pele explains the concept of life as seasons, and that's a big part of, uh, Huge part of this. The, what life in the group is all about. So we have when you're born, it's your summer. Nope. No, spring. Spring. Duh. When you're born, it's spring and until you're 18. 18. Then 18 to 36 is summer. And during the summer, that's when you go out. And, into the world. Yeah. And, yeah. And and have your journey and then come back. 36 to 50. Four. Is it 54? Mm-hmm. Is they, they say it's, that's working age, which yeah. is fascinating. Makes sense. I mean, that's when uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking just like traditionally like men in uh, earlier civilizations. Like you got that old man strength. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, mean, I can't wait to grow into my old man strength. I do love the idea of. When you turn thirty six, that's when you can you start working. Because <laughs> yeah. fuck wasting your youth working and stuck in offices and shit. Yeah. So this part of I'm like I I find this very fascinating, mm-hmm. and I I think it's an interesting thing to consider that the characters are supposed to be like their mid twenties ish. Yeah. And so they are mid-summer. in the mid summer of their lives, which yeah. I really like that a lot. Um, and then winter is fifty four to seventy two. You're like a mentor. Yes, you're that's your you're an elder. You're looked up to and respected. And, and Danny asks, "What happens after seventy two? And Pelly's like, "Yeah." He makes this laugh. slicing motion over his throat and ha ha ha. But of course, we know. Oh no, that probably actually happens. Yeah, because I mean, it's it's the same scene I think where he mentions that they're the next day begins at a stupa mm-hmm. or the first of their many festivals that week. And Josh knows what it is. He's like, what, like a real one? And then Josh won't tell the other yeah. what it is. So I don't know what that's about. Just I, like an academic wanting to hoard their knowledge for themselves. I don't know. I wonder if part of it is if he told them they would all try to leave and he doesn't want to. He wants to be able to watch and document it. And I if guess, yeah. he tells them what it is and they freak out. Then he's going to get dragged out of there with his friends who don't want to stay and cause a big thing. And it sucks for Danny in particular. She should not. I have a lot of thoughts about because she should be allowed to make scene. the decision of whether or not she wants to see that. Right. That's going to be extra traumatizing, I think, for her. Right. Yeah. I mean, she has the hallucinations where they're like mixed the uh, scene of her family's death and the results of the yeah. Adestupa like intermingling in her thoughts. So, yeah, the, the Adestupa, we start with a feast. And <laughs> those girls are walking stupid. And those girl, Hey, someone told those girls they're walking stupid. And they're Mark. walking backwards and picking flowers. <laughs> I wondered, I didn't notice his, his quips as much this time. And I want, were some taken out? No. For our. For the home release? No way. I bet th- there's no way that kind of thing never happens. Like just l- minor lines removed. Yeah. Why but... you what? You feel like you notice them more in the theater? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe you just got used to him. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But they, yeah, they have a big feast, and we see two people who, unlike the rest of the group, are dressed in blue. And there was that gray, I think. It's oh. not the pristine white. That yeah, yeah. Else yeah. Is wearing in and they're case. older people, and yeah, these are the ones who are partaking in the Adishupa. gotta say that lady looks good for 73 the she, dude yeah the dude looks old the dude looks old she yeah i also think she looks like florence Pugh. yeah i think she out, looks she like does. she could be related and i wonder if that's on purpose because i had an image watching it this time of those two people being 
her and Pele, you know, when they turn oh. 70 something. Because I think her and Pele definitely get together after sure. the events of the film. If it all goes according to Pele's plan. Yeah. Well, she's, she's into it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think she she's thinking stuff about him. Because that's like when she's kissing him, that flower is like pulsating. Oh, I didn't notice that. Oh, yeah. I, I never got any indication that she was particularly into him. Oh, okay. But yeah, no, no. Yeah. So they all the cult. I'm just calling them the cult because that's what they are. They they gather on this big cliff and you see the two older people at the very top of it. And you know what's going to happen. And you see them standing up there and then they show the crowd and there's a guy with a mallet. And you instantly know what that mallet's for. If you feast together what they're going to do on top of that cliff, you know, why mallet guys there and it's about to get fucked up. This this scene is this like really fucked me up when we saw it in theaters. Oh, I just yeah. I think because it's so f- stark, it's just so frank in the way it shows everything. And yeah, these these two old people, old people, not even that old. So many two is not even that old. Like it's old, but starting to get there. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> They jump off the cliff. Uh, the lady goes first. She hits the rock with her face and her head gets busted wide open. Oh, Luckily, yeah. she dies quickly, but it's gross. Uh, and then our our man goes second and he opts for the pencil dive. Which I don't know why I did I it. I don't know why you would do feet that. Feet first. Just breaks his legs against the he, ground. Yeah, so that guy lands feet first. His legs get all fucked up. He's he starts laying yelling. there. Everyone else starts Everyone yelling. Everyone else is yelling. And then we see Mallet Guy come forward with his little entourage. <laughs> He's got like him and a couple other people. Well, I, I found it, uh, I think purposefully, a dude hits him in the head with a mallet and then a woman hits him in the head yeah. with a mallet. They like share the responsibility yeah. and crack that guy's skull apart and make sure he's dead yep put him out of his misery and if you missed it the first time they show it a few more times don't worry you will see those you fucking will see heads these mangled heads up close torn the fuck up mm-hmm. this is the gore this mm-hmm. is the most of the gore i mean we also get that blood eagle later but yeah the blood eagle compared to this is not that is bad. not as bad <laughs> no yeah and this is like this is the they cut from a conversation to a close-up on these mangled heads yeah i thought danny's whole like reaction to the scene was really interesting and just the way she kind of takes it all in and the way we see her looking at the uh one of the elders when she's explaining no 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 like this is it's it's natural like we've been observing this custom for years and years and years and i i think yeah part of it obviously it's it's traumatizing to witness in this ritual suicide that's super graphic but i i almost wonder if because so much of her character is she feels guilty for her own emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wonder if seeing how, frankly, the cult deals with death, like no one seems phased by this except the outsiders. And everyone in this cult accepts that it's a part of their lives. And she has it explained to her that, no, that like we we give our lives instead of waiting to die in sickness or misery or pain, just, you know, letting ourselves rot. We choose to go at a certain time in our lives to the honor this cycle and i i wonder if hearing that and hearing it laid out so frankly and seeing how everyone is dealing with this like seemingly with no problem i wonder if part of the scene is her feeling guilty for feeling so traumatized by the death of her family and a mixture of finding relief in the idea of death as natural and not anything to be scared of and then guilt that she could not similarly deal with her grief with such poise and acceptance Mm. I think that's you know I think it's her having anxiety over the way that she's coped with something like that in her life versus the way she's seeing these people do it and choosing to do it and having it be beautiful to them still wants to get out of there Yes, yeah, she's ready to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. So are uh, Connie and Simon. They definitely want to get out of there. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, but they're like, uh, Simon disappears, and one of the elders tells Connie, oh, he had to leave separately. The truck only carries two. And she's like, no, that's bullshit. That He wouldn't do that. And he's like, well, here, come with me. Uh, I'll take you somewhere. And that's the last time we see that's them. That's the last time we see them, yeah. We do hear a woman scream. 
in another scene. Must Wait, be her. Yeah. When? I didn't I didn't catch this either. It was when I was reading the Wikipedia summary of the plot. It's when uh there it's when Josh and another guy and one of the cult guys is showing him the what's it called? The oh, the ru- Ruby the, Rotter. Yeah. The scripture. Yeah. And they're in that temple and then they hear a woman scream and they both like look out to it. And then we never, it's oh. never resolved. That that would be her, oh. which would also be, I guess, Mark says something about like, yeah, I saw her trying out for the Olympic sprint team or whatever. So he saw her running. Oh, fuck. And then we heard her scream. I did not even piece that together. Right. She Yikes. tried to get away from him, apparently. Mm-hmm. Right around here is when Christian tells Josh, hey, man, surprise, I'm doing my thesis about uh, this place. And he does. It is literally exactly what he does to Danny. He goes, what? You, like, you wouldn't have thought I would I would want to do this. I said I might be interested in this. And it's like, yeah, but what I the fuck? I love how Josh calls him out. He's like, I'm actually impressed by how bald you're being about yeah. it. Like, he fucking tears into him dude i'd be so pissed yeah. especially if i have this friend who seems like he isn't super serious or passionate Pretty about aimless, anything yeah. and it's like you know what no i'm just gonna do what you're doing yeah Let's i'm collaborate. gonna do my dissertation on the same thing as you mm-hmm. this is when she's taking the sleeping pills because she's gonna have a hard time sleeping after the adish dupa and boy do those sleeping pills do a number on her dreams yeah you got, she has weird she has ambient dreams for sure <laughs> yeah uh, good she, thing she didn't have reception so she couldn't tweet anything but yeah she has a dream that like she's left there that all, everyone else leaves her there yeah and we it's creepy we see Mark in the back of the car like <laughs> he's <laughs> yeah gonna, like, he's like taunting her. At her and then we see her kind of like belching up smoke like exhaust oh that's a cool effect it is really neat but yeah uh, it's, it's interesting that her nightmare becomes reality she is left there alone. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The I'll leave her there alone in the end. So, uh, yeah, Josh and Mark are, uh, I mean, Josh is learning the lay of the land. He's getting the scripture explained to him. Mark pees on a tree. Yeah. Like a doofus. And it's like- Why a, would you pee right there? It's in- he's fucking Mark. It's just in- oh, Yeah. And it's apparently a tree that has to do with their deceased ancestors. Yeah, nice one, dude. Yep. Oh, what? I'm not allowed to pee? <laughs> so, yeah. So at the next <laughs> meal, he's taken away by a woman who's- Inga, I think. Yeah, who's like been eyeballing him and he's wanting to get in her pants and she's like, come with me, I'll show you. Like, uh, okay, show me what? I don't know. Yeah. Your I'm gonna, boobies? I'm going to go okay. with her. She's going to show me. Yeah. And we never saw Mark again. <laughs> also during mealtime, Christian gets a special pie. Yeah. And some special lemonade. <laughs> he gets strawberry lemonade. Everyone else got just regular old lemonade, but his is something special. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, so he's eating this pie, he finds a pube in it, and that that lemonade is it, got blood in it. Yep. It's got period blood in it. He drinks it down. Yeah. Yep. So now he's in love. Yeah. So romantic. Exactly. And it's a good thing too, because that's the scene where uh Danny it's like the first time she outwardly uh, criticizes him because mm-hmm. they're talking about the whole Simon and Connie thing and how he apparently left without telling her. And she's like, I could see you doing that to me though, mm-hmm. which is probably because she just had that dream. So that's why she's thinking that. Yeah. But yeah, it's the first time that she kind of outwardly criticizes him. It's interesting. Yeah. It, it's yeah. It is like having a dream where someone does someone, you know, does something that they probably would never do in real life, but you feel weird about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then Josh is talking to one of the elders and is in the temple. I, yeah, it's where they keep all of their books of runes. It's a really cool building because it almost looks like it's going into the ground. Yeah. It's like a building that's higher on one end and like lower near the entrance as though it's like slanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As if it like started to sink into the ground. At yeah. An angle. And they, the elder explains that they get all their runes and all their knowledge from a kid that they purposely produce through inbreeding. From a, yeah, they're from a series of oracles, the latest of which is a uh, guy named Ruben. Ruben, yeah. Who is d- physically uh, deformed, yeah. I guess, because, yes, as you said, it's a product of deliberate inbreeding right? in order to produce uh, a person with unclouded judgment, as they say. Yeah, and I've gotten a lot of emails, like, aside from just requesting this movie, which is, like, the most requested movie by far recently, but lots of emails asking us to cover disability 
uh, and horror, disabilities and horror, and mentioning Ruben as a character who they feel embodies this kind of trope of the disabled person as morally superior or you know just just more special in a way and they're good they are like they say in this unclouded and I kind of wonder if this movie's playing with that a bit if it's if it's a self-aware because I don't think like objectively the movie believes that yeah Ruben is special and or is is this kind of like better human it's not dream or and and no it's not dream he's not done it <laughs> he doesn't have any like special abilities he just is an inbred child mm-hmm. um but I, I i can see too where that depiction of him might make some people feel a bit uncomfortable because it, it, it you know it still is a kind of representation of that trope but Ruben also reminds me just because midsummer is so much about traditions and different cultures and traditions that make no sense and we do them just because we've always done them Mm -hmm. and Ruben reminds me of the kind of concept of monarchy because what is a monarch besides like at, at its essence the monarch is supposed to be the connection to God they are the ordained person that God put there to rule And we did that for, we still do that, you know, Uh, it is a crazy thing that we just do because, Yeah. (laughs) and it also is the idea that they come from this untainted bloodline and they are the pure bloodline that is then granted this connection to God. And that to me is what Ruben is down to the (laughs) inbreeding, like we royals interbred themselves to keep the bloodlines pure and to keep that connection to their family lineage and that's kind of what you know like the Habsburgs especially get got like super fucked up you see portraits of them and this is portraits where someone painted them and the painters got to make you look good so oh boy (laughs) you look at some of those Habsburgs it's yeah and they talk about bloodline in here because I think Christian asks who uh like if they run into problems with incest and they say that they invite outside people in to avoid incest yeah, and, uh, to keep a variety in the bloodline. So I think incest is only in the case of the specific Making the oracles. Yes. Right. I just want to know what they like, who were, who were his parents? Yeah. I have a lot of questions about yeah, him. Then that's also a whole nother problematic bag of being like, I right. almost wonder if the two people at the end where we're like, who the fuck are these two? I wonder if are those Ruben's parents? I don't know, man. I want to know who the fuck those people were. Yeah. The elders who yeah. were just all of a sudden there. So, all right. So then at night, um, because Josh is told, no, you may not take photographs. Absolutely of not. So <laughs> yeah. he goes to bed with his shoes on that night so he can get up and sneak out and go take pictures with, with the, the flash, flash on. on. Come on, buddy. Poor form. It's Ruben's good. sleeping right there. Yeah, right. Ruben's asleep. You're going to wake him up with a flash. And those pictures are going to look like shit. It's like when you see people at Disneyland taking pictures in the dark rides oh, with a flash. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Idiots. It smells like garbage. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also this weird window in that building that I'm not... Do you know what I mean? It's like the very back. It's right... It's behind the altar. It almost looks like a well, fucking... That, it's in the reflection that we see the door open and someone yeah, coming in, right? But what is that there for? I don't know. Sunlight. I yeah I guess it's, yeah I don't know it's a it's a weird thing he sees someone come in and he turns around and he thinks it's Mark yeah it's like Mark close the door we're not supposed to be in here no it's just a dude wearing Mark's face yeah and then he 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 kind of looks closer and then we see is Mark Donald Duck in it because he's got oh, a shirt on and no pants is, he's hanging dong for <laughs> yeah. sure yeah yeah uh but yeah they skin the fool and there's he's wearing his yeah, face which I didn't get the when I saw this the first time for some reason it didn't register to me that it was someone wearing Mark's skin I was like what the fuck happened to Mark I thought he <laughs> just I thought he was turned into a weird undead like a zombie something thing? Yeah. which but the, I I got later what mm. had happened but then in that moment I thought oh he's yeah a zombie then Josh is hit real hard in the yeah. head with a hammer. I don't think it's the same mallet as the cliff thing. It's but a mallet. It yeah. is a mallet. And they let him just kind of lay there and bleed like out. And, and bleed out, yeah. It's, yeah, it's- so yeah, in the span of like five minutes, we have the cast. We just get rid of uh, Mark and Josh. They're, they're gone. Yep, yep. And it's 
weird because no one oh no they do they kind of invent a reason why they could have gone i missing. think so it's not i think no i think this i think your your explanation makes this make sense yeah because the next day at whatever the fucking morning meeting or what have you the uh cult leaders are like our scripture has been stolen so if anyone took it we'll let you just return it i think that they made that up as a way of being like, oh, and your friends are your, gone. He, they ran away they with ran our away with, with the it. book. Yeah, yeah, because even because fucking Christian is happy to jump on that explanation. He's like, I bet I don't think Mark would do it. Josh, Josh, fuckers took fuck your that book. guy. We're not friends with We're him. Friends. We, we don't, don't even it. know that Dude. guy. He was a coffee boy. <laughs> Never had no idea who he was. Coffee boy. It was a, a he like a Trump thing. Oh, I whenever thought it was like he reheats in- his coffee. Oh, well, also that. But no, whenever someone is in, uh, implicated in a crime, it's like I didn't, didn't know him. He oh, was he a low just, level he, staff member. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He's just a coffee oh, guy. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I'm trying to make subtle political references. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't make me spell them out. <laughs> So now it's uh it's May Queen time. We're at the May Queen ceremony, and this is another yeah. This is where I wrote down the focus on breathing because when they toast to each other, so all the all the women and the the group do this the May Queen Maypole dance, mm-hmm. and when they toast to each other and they drink more drugs, they go, Whoo. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I think is funny because in the scene where. Christian is doing his shitty attempt at I knew it was your birthday the whole time and she goes to blow out the candle we get a very pronounced (gasps) where she blows out the candle and this is literally the reverse of that which I think is kind of neat yeah yeah by the end of the movie she's like reverse yeah it's the it's the inverse of that tradition also prior to this is she's been slowly acclimated and kind of absorbed into the culture because at one point she's walking around i think it's after the connie simon thing and she uh is approached by a young woman who's like do you want to come help the women with their chores and she says yes but then the next day after they explain that like their scripture is missing another elder is like you will go do this with the women uh, it, it it changes from do you want to to you are you now are, doing yeah. this. Yeah, we're ingratiating you more now. You're doing yeah. It's like a slow conditioning yeah. to being part of everything. Because she is taken with the women to do the May Queen thing, while Christian is uh, has a meeting with Siv, Siv, Siv yeah, mm-hmm. who is a uh, woman elder of the cult, mm-hmm. uh, possibly the highest ranking. I, I get that, but I think she is the top dog because she was the one who welcomed everyone in the beginning and she has her own house yes which is another amazing set this one i actually kind of i remember seeing in the theater i just like it just took my breath away because yeah, all, all the, the all the drawings on the wall are beautiful it's this, a bear yeah the, on fire yeah christian is is staring very intently at a drawing of a bear on fire which when you watch this again it's like yeah, that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and that's when she tells him that Maya has chosen. Yeah, to she, mate with he him. thinks this is about the books that have gone like, missing. I swear, it and wasn't she's me. like, "No, the redhead girl wants to fuck you, and you're a very good astrological match. Yep, you should go do it." And we don't see the rest of that conversation. No, but from then on, he is not looking good. He yeah. walks out of there like very pensive, looking around. Do you think? Like, do you think he? agreed to do it and he feels guilty i don't or... know if they told him it needs to happen for a certain reason or if it's guilt like he wants to but like he's not sure but he's very pensive when he comes out and then he sits down and watches the maypole dance that uh danny's doing and that's when they give him like a cup of drugs it's like another liquid that'll they say remove inhibitions and he even he doesn't want it is the thing he's like I, I think I'll have a bad trip. I don't want. And, and they, they say like, no, no, no you no, gotta you do gotta, it. Yeah. He <laughs> takes it, man. And from then on out, that guy's fucked he's up. Fucked he up. is constant hunched over. Looks like he's freezing cold. Mm-hmm. Like, oh man. Do you think she told him in the house the extent to which to like what was going to happen to him? I don't. Do you think he knew he was going to die? No. No. I think he'd be. He you think you think he'd be like we're we're out of here? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he would go willingly into That's, that. Yeah, you okay. Know? Thinking about his, yeah, I think he would. But from then on, he is fucked. He's up, on man. so many drugs. I know. This is when I'm like, oh, he's he's a shitty boyfriend, but this is bad. right. Yeah, he's not like. I feel two ways about it. One way is in the fantasy world of the film where all of these characters are like archetypes anyway and none of it's actually real and it's super heightened and like really fantastical i'm like fuck that guy who's a shitty boyfriend 
Light him up, girl. Woo! Go for her dot gif. <laughs> Lucille Bluth gif. <laughs> um, but then on the the other side, when I look at it, it's like, okay, if this is a real thing that's happening, no, of course he doesn't deserve that. He yeah. is a shitty boyfriend, but... And I, I think the movie's too grounded in reality to look at it the first way, honestly. It's, you know, it's it's... It's so realistic. Everything is from the way they experience their drug trips to just, yeah, right. there's nothing that puts it it's, in a kind of heightened it, reality. It's more like knowing this isn't actually real that yeah. I can be in the headspace of like, yeah, fuck them because it's all, it's it's a story. Yeah. But yes, I, I see what you mean where, yeah, this movie is, is realistic. It's, mm-hmm. you know. We don't and, have any and, actual magic happen. It's all real. Yeah, there, there's no indication that the more uh, supernatural or fantastical things that the cult claims are true are true. Right. There's absolutely no indication right. from the film that like maybe they're right that if they if you do this, it'll result in something good. Because like even the mist has that. Right. Where it's like it's, oh, it's com- not like the witch where yeah. You like oh there is some supernatural stuff exactly and that's why I contrast the ending of this movie with the witch which I do feel is a happy ending yeah. and I'm mm-hmm. like you go Thomason you got out right. of that shit situation whereas with the ending of this I'm like oh she just got absorbed into a cult I think I think Ari Aster would agree with you from what I've read of his you yeah. know yeah like what he's saying with the film and how he feels about other people's interpretation of the ending um yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll get to the ending prop. Yeah, we're we'll close. talk more yeah. about it. Um so yeah, it's the uh May Queen dance competition. Basically, it's dance around the maypole until the last person is standing cuz it's like a dance where it's confusing and there's lots of direction changing and stuff. So they're all bumping into each other and a lot of people have theorized that it was a preordained thing like she won on purpose but i don't know if that's the case i feel like some of those girls seem upset when they lose they want to yeah. the may queen yeah yeah i'm not sure i i could definitely see that being a theory though mm-hmm. uh it this is also i think the first time we see her laugh and like really smile yeah right because mm-hmm. i don't know when else she's like full-on happy maybe there are moments where she's like faking a smile or like just barely getting by but during this dance she is laughing yeah. and having a clearly good time yeah. mm-hmm. and somehow speaks Swedish at one point I think it's I wonder if it, I don't know because I don't obviously don't speak Swedish if anyone does can you tell me if that actually is Swedish because yeah. my theory is that it's not Th- my theory is gibberish. that it's gibberish yeah and they're making gibberish noises and, at but each that other. like because of the drugs they took because again they also took some drug juice uh, they're just th- having they this think connection. that they're saying the things that the subtitles yeah, are saying. Yeah. That's my theory. I don't think it's any actual language. But I would love if we we have to have someone listening or watching who speaks Swedish. Please tell us. <laughs> yeah, she wins. Yeah, she she wins. She's May Queen, and she goes why like <laughs> yeah she she danced real good and <laughs> she gets uh she gets her flower crown upgraded to a bigger flower crown with like a handle it's like a like a arch across the top of more flowers and then they have a big meal and christian's fucking stumbling up to it because he's done so many drugs there's so many shots of her with everyone and then him by himself yeah just cold and hunched over yeah I, I thought it was interesting here that this is another scene where it's a meal and everyone's wearing white except one person's in blue and they're Christian. the one who's uh, you know done so yeah later in the day she tries to eat a herring a salted <laughs> oh, fish yeah like it's <laughs> good luck. luck yeah she doesn't do it yeah uh and then she even they're like okay you're gonna yes queen you're gonna have to get in this little carriage and go do something and she's like, can Christian come? She like tries to bring him along. Nay. <laughs> nay. Says, nay. The queen has to and do it And then Christian alone. goes, excuse me, what's going on here? And this old dude turns around and just fucking he like claps in his face and everything goes all wavy. <laughs> It's like, like the saddest. It, it got like such a big laugh out of me again, but it is really fucked up. He's so fucked up. He's like, why would you do that? Yeah. The, yeah. The actor sells it so much. But, yeah. I think he is um, maybe a bit overlooked in this role. Of I would say Extremely so. spot on 
basic boyfriend who is <laughs> shitty but like isn't a villain yeah he's just he's a just lame a bad boyfriend dude yeah. yeah he's bad at communicating jack rayner yeah yeah he's, he's very good at and this. he's just so sad when i he's know all fucked up and that guy cracks in his face yeah so then they put Danny into this carriage, which is incredible. That we can have if you want. Oh we can put god. it in a front lo- front yard. Yes. You know? <laughs> oh god, I love they all do this like clap and then they they run away and they're carrying the torches and stuff. Oh, that's and... the shot where in the trees in the background you can see. Oh, her where they're carrying the her. That's right. The, that's been all over Twitter and that mm-hmm. freaked me out because I did not notice that the first time I watched it. But in the trees when they're carrying her on the platform, you can see the image of her sister with the pipe and it is like blend it's it's perfectly it's done so well done i was looking out for other images like that but i didn't, I didn't see, see any, any yeah. i think that might be although who knows um you do also see her mom and her sister in the crowd um she even turns and she says mom mm-hmm. to one of them uh so she's taken around to bless the crops i think the okay so they, they dig a hole and they put it's like it rice? grains okay, i think grain, it's grains meat, meat and, an and egg, eggs which i think is like it's a representation of these are the things we grow on our commune they make they like crops meat livestock yeah and eggs I yeah guess. yeah like chickens yeah i think that's what uh, sure it's supposed to be i was like is this a weird spell no i think it's just a symbolic like this embodies the stuff that yeah, we like, produce and the may queen is like do well you you things yeah mm-hmm. that's when they sing at each other and it's really nice oh yeah that's a really um, nice song i i love but, the but whole- i gotta say the the woman's like repeat after me and then she starts singing in a super high pitch foreign words. I would be like, I'm going to need to see that written down. I, would, uh, I can't repeat what you're saying. <laughs> but she does it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love this whole scene with her going around in the carriage and blessing. The, it just is very, I don't know. It is nice to see her connect with the women in, in the commune. And it's why it's you understand why she would start to feel at home there Mm because there are those moments where it feels very nice and meanwhile though uh christian is taken away from the dinner table (laughs) it's like they're leaving him a trail of flowers Flowers, and he is brought to it is the same building that the rune library is in poor reuben is still in there which i think is a very funny reveal that he's just been watching this whole time (laughs) but uh Christian is led into there and it's He's given more drugs. He's given more drugs. Like, they inhale they this make powder. Him, yeah, they yeah, they give him more stuff. He I was looking at a, a, an article that was explaining what some of the meaning of the runes were in this movie and he's wearing a robe where the I think it's like a it looks like an arrow that's pointing up and that represents it literally it's like male vitality and fertility. Yeah, yeah, so for sure. Um then he's escorted into this room where it is all these naked women holding hands and they're swaying back and forth and there's Maya lying on this bed of flowers and she just like opens her legs up to him. I like I fucking love this scene and the inner cutting between him and Danny and like that it's it's just such a fucking good sequence and it's so weird so and weird. uncomfortable and beautiful like everything about it's just very good and funny yeah because this is probably the biggest laugh in the theater at least oh yeah Mm because he like gets down there and starts having sex with maya and the women are still humming this whole yeah and And then one of them steps forward and grabs uh she grabs maya's hand and is like she starts singing like right in their faces and And it's a beauty like she her voice is so very good yeah i think that makes it funnier the Mm -hmm. fact that she sounds like fucking like enya or some (laughs) shit and it's but yeah jack rayner face like christian's face oh. is just like what <laughs> yeah so then then when he's like they're like okay you can like finish now and then this old lady comes around and starts pushing, pushing on his butt, butt cheeks oh my god <laughs> it's yeah like it's so fucking it's so funny fucked up. and fucked up like it's it's a perfect combination of funny and fucked up because it is fucked up yeah like it is I would I would say it's rape. I would say it's because he's, he's on so, so many, many drugs, drugs. Yes. and they're like, "Go do this, right?" Um, but just the <sighs> yeah. fact that you just don't expect that to happen. Yeah, it's just the absurdity <laughs> of it just all. So is, weird. It's hard. And not- then that's right around too when you realize Ruben's <laughs> there the whole time, just sitting on his bed watching. Is like really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So that's right around when. 
Danny gets back from blessing all the crops and she hears noises because uh, all the, them are, they're all moaning in unison. They mm. all experience emotions like in unison. It's very interesting. They all cry together. They all moan together. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then she asks one of the women she's with, well, what's that? And she goes, that's not for us. But she goes and ahead she goes and in there anyway looks through a keyhole, little peephole, and sees it going down. And so she's pissed. She starts immediately crying. She vomits. Oh, yeah, she does. Um, vomit. And, and then the women lead her back into the barracks and cry with her. And they like imitate her crying. Yeah. It's kind of like an improv game, the way that. Uh, like, yeah. It's yeah. the one where you like are mo- moving at the. But that's what I mean is it's it's the it's the mirror imagery mm, okay, and it's yeah. all the mirrors in this. And this is where I think that pays off is you then instead of having an actual mirror where it's glass and we're seeing people reflected in it we have this group where they're literally it's like danny and then the one girl who's like like right in front of her and then the whole group itself there's like a few people on one side and a few people on the other it's all like super symmetrical and Mm -hmm. they're just this like crying breathing mass that is like yeah perfectly a mirror image of itself here we see actual people being a a mirror for her and being a reflection of her emotions and like giving something back to her. Whereas every other time we've seen someone in a mirror or like she's talking to someone, it's an indirect reflection where it's, we don't get, we don't see them looking at each other. It's all very obscured and weird, but now we finally have her emotional release where she's properly doing it with people who are feeling this with her and who are going through it with her, which I think is fascinating. Yes. I would argue though, that another reading of it, and one that I thought uh, probably tinted by how I just hate cults and I just hate these people. You should hate cults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate cults because I know human psychology and its weak points and the fact that cults take advantage of those. Well, that's why you know? she, and again, that's why this feels so good for her. Is yeah. It's, yeah. It, yeah, it is that psychology. Of- but I noticed that every time that the cult... Uh, mimics back and vocalizes pain with someone else it's always pain that they created Mm. and so to me their mimicry of it just seems superficial or like performative and it doesn't seem like sincere because the first time we see it is when the guy jumps off the cliff and breaks his legs and they start like wailing with him jumped off the cliff because you guys made him and then they do it with danny there after she saw her boyfriend having sex in a ritual that they forced him right. to do. That is interesting. Yeah, all those times where they do mimic back, it is something of their own. Yeah, because at the very end, yes, they do it when they're they light it up on the, fire. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Because mm-hmm. there are plenty other moments where you know someone is emotionally fraught. Like we've seen her cry at other points in this movie, but we don't get that, you know. But yeah. it is it is interesting that, yeah, they do kind of set that up so that I don't know if they intended for her to see that or not, but it is something of their own design. And it is. Yeah. It, yeah. It, I had then, that thought, too. Like, did they want her to see that right. in order to push her to choose him at the end? You know, they push her to yep. like yeah. pushing those butt cheeks. Yeah. After <laughs> Christian has some real harsh post climax clarity oh man as soon as he's done and maya's curling up in a ball to and get she's that rocking semen. back and forth and she's like i feel the baby <laughs> yeah doesn't work that way it's but like okay. that urban legend where you stand on your head you get <laughs> yeah yeah uh yeah he runs out of there right off the bat he's like Fuck. very i think gross but like awesome touch that his dick is bloody Oh, is it? He I didn't notice. Because she's yeah. a virgin. Oh, yeah. Which I just, I don't know. I, I love how frank this movie is. Yeah, because yeah. he runs out. There's fucking flopping there's floppy, around, man. floppy dick. Yeah. That, like, Roma is, like, also really just, oh, yeah. like, unsexual floppy dick. Isn't it when he's, like, doing... He's doing, like, like jujitsu and shit. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Back when that movie is funny and not devastating. Oh, God. Uh, uh, yeah, Christian, he's like running around and seeing people and like he's yeah. freaking out. He runs into uh, a barn of sorts. There are animals there. And that's when he sees the blood, eagle. the blood eagle. It's Simon. Yeah. Who we have not seen uh, since he disappeared. Flowers in his eyes. Lungs breathing. But Which I think I, it's an effect of the drugs. You know what? I think you're right. Because he can't still because be alive. I was thinking you can't, you wouldn't be alive. Like you, you could not survive that. But I... 
think it makes sense for him to think that he's still because we don't see a move or anything. No, exactly. That. We don't see like his I like. Okay, I out. like that explanation. I had to think because about this because otherwise, I'm like, count. yeah. Well, that, eh. mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he. Okay, I like and, that. And yeah, so he sees the blood eagle, turns around, gets more drugs, more drugs blown into his blown face, in his face, and then in, in a love, cool yeah, perspective yeah. way, they they reach up and close each eyelid individually to blacken out the camera, mm-hmm. and then open them up later. Uh, like that's it, it comes out of it that way hmm. and there's a woman being like hey christian good you're up you can't move or speak this is a nightmare this, this is, is an the worst. absolute nightmare uh i think this is like one of the scariest situations you could be in this it's is like, so horrific you can't yeah. move or uh, yeah oh it's so ugh. yeah ugh. So it's it's like the final ceremony. Uh, Danny is there in a giant, Ooh, it's glorious flower gown. She's, she's a flower slug. Mm-hmm. She really does look like a slug. It's she has her little flower antennas, and she's <laughs> in this big flower gown that many people did for Halloween this year, and I yep. love it. Well done. Yeah. Uh, and this is when it like the the festival is drawing to a close, and they are going to sacrifice nine people. And it is it's four outsiders, four outsiders, four of their own members. Yeah, and because then, they again, it's it's the mirror imagery yes. thing, right? It's like the reciprocity of we have four outsiders, therefore we must give four of our we own. We will match them with our own, and, and then, then the ninth person will be chosen by the May Queen be- between a predetermined outsider christian and a random like lottery they have a fucking <laughs> yeah it is like a bingo machine they they spin the thing and the ball determine come out. the uh the other potential it's a power ball thing yes yeah. uh member of their it's community some random dude random dude <laughs> yeah. uh but yeah the four outsiders being simon connie josh Mark, and, and Mark. josh yep. yep and then uh the four Members of the commune are, are two randos two who random are already elders dead. Who are already dead and stuck with stuffed with sticks and stuff. I this wa- was very confusing. This confused me in the theater, and I was thinking I'm going to keep track of this this time and I see if this makes more sense to me. I think it's just too random. Yeah, because I know in the, I know some people were like, "Oh, they're the people who jumped off the cliff." No, no though they were incinerated. Yeah, yeah. The people who who yeah jumped were both incinerated, so it's not them. Mm-hmm. It's that's why I'm like, what if it's Ruben's parents? <laughs> I think that's more interesting sure um and then two volunteers one of them being uh pele's friend yeah Ingmar, Ingmar who and brought connie in. and other dude just other dude who looks like eric siska from we hit movie i oh, think it's that, oh, guy. It that guy i think it's that guy yeah. he's a very acclaimed swedish actor All, actually a lot of these swedish actors have been in like a ton of swedish film and television nice. so they're Love not just it. randos yeah yeah uh <laughs> yeah and then they're like okay may queen pick who are you gonna pick you're shitty ex-boyfriend or this random person you've never talked to once and so she picks her ex obviously this is yeah this is when i'm like fuck yeah it's it's a lot he's sitting there unable to move or speak he's in like the type of wheelchair that i I feel like I've made this joke on here before but it's the same wheelchair that every theater department somehow has <laughs> because they did Annie once and someone had to be FDR. And so they have like the old wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> like we had like one of those in college for some reason. Yeah. But yeah, it is like an old school wheelchair that Christian is in with his blood. just covered in a blanket. He can't fucking move. Oh man. So then he gets put into a bear that yeah, they, they cut, cut open. open. It's the bear, bear that we, we saw see earlier. earlier, which yeah, it is just a bear. It's, it's there for someone to get put inside of, I believe. And we're reviewing the theatrical cut. Oh, I yeah. think in the director's, cut i could be wrong but i think i saw someone say that there is we see that he has his limbs taken off so that he fits in the bear oh, man with like wire and it's gross um i, I, I do want to watch the director's cut yeah one day uh, but and then yeah he's put inside their like structure that they've been seeing in the background all this time it's like a triangular structure but mm-hmm. all the bodies are wheeled in there you see uh mark is dressed as a fool yeah with the, with the jingly, jingly hat, hat. Mm-hmm. so yeah they're all put in there uh the two living volunteer guys are given you yeah y-e-w yeah and when you were saying earlier there's like no proof at all that any of of the magic or any of the anything in that they say works does and i think this is like such a clear instance of that where they're like you like you tree extract where the fuck it is so you don't feel pain and we see those dudes burn up. They're screaming. Yeah, one of them screams. That's a nightmare uh, way to die. Yeah, because, yeah, they're all sitting in there, Christian in his bear costume, unable to move, and they light that thing on fire. 
it's horrific. Yeah, and it's it's I wonder cuz as they were putting the bodies in there and they they put down Mark He's like stuff with straw and yeah, stuff, he's and he's. Nothing. I was like, I wonder what happened to that thing. Like that'd be a weird prop to own, and would be kind of cool. And then I think they. Oh, they probably actually, just. I think they it. actually yeah, burned sure. them all. So never mind. Yep. Sorry. I'll just have to settle for the banner. Yep. Guess uh, we'll have to settle. <laughs> um. So yep, that it goes up. Uh, they obviously the dudes in there who are alive start screaming and that's when the the cult is screaming and everyone's doing like this amazing physical work they're also they're just... wearing the most colors out of yes, the whole movie yes maya has red lipstick on because yeah. now she's she's fucked and <laughs> yeah a lot of them have colors mm-hmm. in addition to their white clothes yeah danny is screaming Still... and sobbing in her slug outfit is she I think yeah, she's like crying. Because the last shot is her. I think it turns to her. She's okay. crying, and I think it turns to her laughing. Yeah. And it's because it's, and this is why, we'll, you know, now we can get into like <laughs> takeaways from the ending because it is complicated and and weird and makes everyone feel something slightly different. I think, like, I think the catharsis you feel for her is definitely there. Just. You know, we identify with her as a character. We don't like her boyfriend because he sucks. You know, we've seen everything she's gone through. So in that sense, you do feel her happiness when she's smiling. And it is it is like this. She's burning down her past and cutting off her connection to the outside world that, as we saw, doesn't really have anything to offer her and had nothing to you know, there wasn't any support for her out there. She found support here. So her smiling, feel like it feels good, but you can't look at this ending like completely that way and not the other way where you, it's still a cult. It's still fucked. Yeah, they still <laughs> murdered a bunch of people yeah. and now she's like part and, of the cult. Yeah, and I think the fact that it is a cult and the fact that it is... um yeah, like it is nefarious and it's even if they are not intending it to be, it's still, you know, I, I, I think it just I think he's kind of showing how people find themselves in situations like that. This isn't Danny's mm-hmm. not a stupid person. Mm-hmm. Danny is. Oh, yeah. We see that she's intelligent. We see we like her. We, I, you know, we, we honestly, this whole movie, she feels like the smartest one because she's the one going, what the fuck is going on here? Everyone keeps disappearing. And so we be, by being in her shoes and by feeling good when she finally is smiling and feels this acceptance and is literally watching all these people that she knows burn in a in like in a thing in a temple it's yeah we we kind of get oh this is how someone can be manipulated and and be put in a situation where this feels like the answer and yeah. this feel this feels like family like when you have no one else it's like this is how you get sucked into a situation like that. That's a really good reading. Yeah. So I think it's both things. I think, yes, it's, it's beautiful. And it's that happiness is there and that joy is there for her. And you feel good when she literally burns it down, but (laughs) you know, it's not all happy. Yeah. I mean, I think it's horrific and disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. But I also don't think it's a hundred percent, you know, like, Oh, this is, a horrible you know all of this is it's no like there's still like as a character it's really neat to see her transform that way and you know i don't know so i think it's like a it's a great ending i think it's it really is about you know like how you need support when you're grieving you need that kind of you need someone to listen to you you need a family type group or structure and when you don't have that it's that much more difficult to cope and yeah yeah so i think i at least that's what i feel he's trying to say for sure i don't i don't think he is making a movie where he thinks being in a cult is cool (laughs) (laughs) i think he's saying this is why it could seem like it's really cool yeah you know yeah yeah great and anyway. like I said, I feel like the witch is a happy ending. Oh fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, I love that the ending of the witch. It's the first time we really see her smile like that. It's the same kind of mm-hmm. feeling. It's you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. We finally did it. 
We did Midsummer. We did it. We I'm spent sure there's all so much and a half on we it. didn't talk about, but we've this we've recorded for so long. I know. So let's yeah, let's have a fun discussion about Midsummer in the comments or tweet at me. Yep. Uh, I try to mention if I'll do a movie on a kill count when we cover it on podcast. I I think I'll. I I remember when we did Hereditary. I was like, I don't know if I'll do. I'll do Hereditary. I think. Yeah. Just because people want to see it. Mm-hmm. It's just gonna be hard to make. I jokes do want to rewatch you know? it, so yeah. So and so I'll do Midsummer one day too. I don't mm-hmm. know how soon, but we'll get it one day. But I won't be able to get into it as much as we did here, which is why the podcast exists mm-hmm. for the deeper dives. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, but thank you so much mm-hmm. for joining us. I'm thrilled that we're in the post Halloween era of our lives right yeah. now it's been real nice mm-hmm. and uh yeah we'll we'll do it again next week with something else yep we'll find something fun but please get the conversation going in the comments mm-hmm. i want to read your thoughts and shit yes yeah uh follow dead meat on social media at dead meat james on twitter and instagram and i'm at carebeck c-a-r-e-b-e-c-c on twitter and instagram and if you want merch deadmeatstore.com mm-hmm. and go ahead and email deadmeatpod at gmail.com if you want to Until next week, I'm James. (laughs) I'm Chelsea. This has been the Dead Meat Podcast. (laughs) 